just so happy, but why at the same time do I feel this sense of sadness? It's logical because when you really, really want something, the absence of it doesn't feel so good. And you're not feeling both of those things at the same time. You're feeling really, really happy or really, really sad, but you're not feeling both ends of that vibrational spectrum at the same time. You might be trained as many humans are to weigh the pros and the cons and the pluses and the minuses, and you might be really good at thinking there and thinking there and thinking there and thinking there and thinking there, but you don't need to. When you say there's so many things, but they're all pointing to a singular theme. So we'll just chew there about that. What's on your mind? I just don't even know where to start. I'm going to just go back. No, wait. You do know where to start. You know where to start. Where you want to start with us in this focused moment is on something that matters to you a lot. That's where you want to start. I just have the feeling that I can feel people's energies. You can, you can. Well, everyone can. And that speaks to why you're there and there and there and there and there. We know that you were listening to us as we began. And we we're talking about how most humans are observers. And when you are sensitive to energy, that means you're not just observing with your physical senses, you're observing vibrationally too. But you don't want to just an observer of so many things. You want to train, and we mean that in just the way that word means to you. You want to train yourself into a vibrational frequency that then limits what you can observe. I think that's one of the issues I observe things. It's that... sort of like going into a bookstore. We're just going to keep interrupting you till we rein in your energy. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> Until we influence you into your alignment. It's like going into a bookstore with no real sense of why you're there. You would be overwhelmed with the subjects and the things to select from. But if you have an idea of what you're looking for, then you have a better experience. And so what we really want to talk about, it's what you want to talk about. It's what you are about. And it's a subject that we are just now forming a new word around, even though we've been talking about all of this stuff for a long time through this format. You're talking about influence. You're talking about how important it is for you through the choices of what you think about before you get out there where people are. The choices that you are focused upon that cause you to find vibrational harmony with that greater point of view that we've been talking about already here today. Because when you, and it's not hard to do, find resonance with your own inner being. Now you're tuned in, tapped in, turned on to the frequency that is really who you are. And now you don't have access. You're not empathetic to all of the scattered energy that's going on all around the planet. You're in vibrational harmony with who you are. And now you are an influencer of alignment, not a scattered person that's buffeted around like a cork on a raging sea. Can you feel that? Mm -hmm. You heard it and you feel it and it's what you're asking for, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So? The blocking out, you know, I see things so like I'll see somebody treating somebody or not doing, being acting kind towards someone or... So our question to you is, what's going on in your vibration that makes that your point of attraction? Because I want to fix that person and make them better. That's exactly right, because you're an uplifter. But hear this, you want to influence them to alignment. But when you're focused upon that behavior that is so upsetting to you, you're joining that influence. And that's why you feel scattered. So how do I block that out? How do I just see that person doing that thing and saying, I, I need to change it? And you don't wait until they're in front of you. You prepare your vibrational atmosphere before they show up in it. In other words, you get yourself so stable that here they come, the ornery belligerent bully. <laughs> and they come to you. The energy sucker. They come to you, energy giver of your energy away to the sucker. <laughs> You're blaming them for your lack of preparation. 
I didn't do anything about finding my alignment with who I am. I just came out into the day and I found you and it's your fault. <laughs> uh, well, you found me because we have some things in common and it's not because you're a bully it's because you're a bully watcher. <laughs> you're a bully, not like her. You're a bully wanting to stop, but that's not how it works because there's no law in this universe of exclusion. There's only the law of attraction. There's only the law of inclusion. Now see, here's the thing. This bully that you're watching is not only that this bully has an inner being who is wanting to call him or her home to alignment. But for whatever reason, that person is not there. And when you see them and are upset by them, you're not there either. This is why we began as we did today. If you're not in full concert, in full harmony, in full blending or somewhere close to it with your inner being, then your influence is scanty. And then your relationship with them, the bully that you want to stop bullying becomes one of weakness of action. Then it's almost like you have to be the bigger bully to the bully to make the bully not be a bully. What? <laughs> you can't get there from there. And so how are you going to harness your influence? Wait. How are you going to allow yourself to be harnessed by the true influence of well being before you then want to express it or focus it towards someone else? Now think about something that makes me happy, no matter how small and insignificant it's going to be. That's right. And when is the best time for you to do that? As soon as I feel that attraction to observe that negative. Mm, exactly the wrong time. <laughs> what you just said was. I'm not yet in sync with who I really am, but I'm out in the world and I'm seeing reasons that I want to be in sync, but I'm not in sync, but boy, I can see the reason that I want to be, but I'm not, but I can see the reason that I want to be, but I'm not. You got to get there first. It's the preparation of your alignment. That is your dominant work, not the looking around for the reason for the alignment. That's why we call this creative process. Three basic steps. Step one is, you know what you don't want. Do you know? that you do all of your creating hear this. You haven't heard it in this pointed way from us before you do all of your creating in step one, because that's when you're exposed to the, I don't want this. Therefore I do want this and I don't want this. So all those bullies you've been watching and that you've personally experienced are what have caused you to put this huge desire in your vortex and your inner being is completely lined up with that and knows the power of your desire and is calling you never endingly toward that knowing toward that opposite of bullying, which is security toward that opposite of bullying, which is love toward that opposite of bullying, which is connection. So in moments when you're not being challenged by what you're seeing. That's the time for you to prepare your vibrational atmosphere. In other words, in a very rudimentary, very simple example would be if you were going to be the championship boxer of the world, you wouldn't wait until you were in the ring with the first opponent before you started moving your body like that. You would have done a lot of training first, a lot of it. And you would have confidence in your stability and your stamina and your strength and your endurance and your clarity. The preparation before is what it's all about. Physical preparation in that example and mental preparation too. But you don't just wait until there's somebody there with their gloves on before you say, oh yeah, maybe I could do this. <laughs> and so the preparation for being the uplifting teacher that you are is by being tuned to the energy, to the power, to the clarity, to the leverage of this energy that creates worlds. Because if you're not hooked into that, then you're just going to have a fight like the rest of them are. And nothing is going to happen as a result of your including yourself in that fray. So I wake up in the morning, I do my meditation and I ask this to meet nothing but happy, joyful people all day long. And I'm on a roll doing that. I'm feeling great and fantastic and one here they come here comes that person 
I'm doing great. I'm still, I'm not even observing anything. But listen to the contradiction of what you're saying to us. So I want to help people who are not in alignment, find alignment. I want to be an influence, but I don't want to see any of them today. <laughs> I only want to see the ones that are already in alignment. Okay. <laughs> Which is it? Are you an uplifter? Are you so incapable? Now we're just playing with you here. We're going to tease you just a little bit. Do you think that you are so incapable of maintaining your alignment and influence that you only want to see happy people all day? Aren't you really saying I'm happy to be out there and see some of all of you and who I really am is this. And if any of you are in the vicinity of what I know you want and what I know I want, then maybe we'll have a meaningful rendezvous. But I'm sure not going to go looking for the one of you that's the most disconnected from who you are and give my undivided attention to you. Because when I do that, your influence will win. And this is the thing that we really want you to hear because there's really a big weirdness in that. Hear how weird this is. We're going to speak as if we are you. I am an extension of source energy and I have the ability to meditate and other things and align myself with this loving creative energy that creates worlds. I have the power to do that. And yet sometimes I can meet up with someone who's not tuned into that leverage, who just has a whole lot of negative momentum going and their negative momentum dominates me. What's up with that? It can only mean I'm over there in their world and they're better at being Henri than I am. <laughs> Think about it. That's what that means. Do you really want to win the battle of who can be the biggest and the baddest and the meanest? Do you want to have the sharpest tongue? Do you want to be able to dig the deepest digs? Do you want to control like that? No, that's not who you are. You will always lose that game because nothing about you wants any of that. And you know what? They will always lose that game too because none of them want any of it either but they're still fighting it out in other words there's this whole crowd of disconnected beings duking it out and triumphing over one another in this paltry mediocre puny unpleasant cesspool of not being even close to who they want to be that's not the game you want to play in you want to tune in tap in turn on you want to feel your clarity and your power so much so that you can see the value even in that bully. What he's thinking about himself right now and even what he's thinking about you right now has no relevancy to what you think about him because you're tuned in to the fullness of who you are and you know his true value, not his temporary separation from it. Mm. And we sure can understand why that would make someone like you nuts yeah. because you've come for upliftment. But for a while it feels like upliftment must mean knocking the legs out from those who aren't uplifting. So if I could just push hard enough against all those bullies and all those mean, negative, hateful others, if I could just obliterate them through my pressure to them and we say only problem with that is law of attraction says you're not obliterating them you're giving them power you're throwing fuel on their fire where if you refuse to see their hatred you won't fuel it anymore Whew. you can't beat me with your hatred your hatred's not real oh yeah I'll show you how real my hatred isn't well I really wasn't asking for that see a in other words, we're not saying confront. You can't reason with unreasonable, but you can get into your own power and you can be guided into the situation where you can be of greatest value.